to talk to you about something a little bit more kind of uh, serious, I guess, is, you know, obviously you, you quite famously um, suffered with a number of significant uh, hearing issues, which is not ideal for someone in your gang. Yeah. Uh, uh, tinnitus and hyperacusis, uh, yeah. you know, the two which kind of spring to mind. Could you maybe give me an insight into, you know, what it's like to be on the receiving end of, of that, I suppose? Yeah, it, it's worse to be the tinnitus, and the tinnitus is deafening 24 hours a day, but I've had it 27 years now, so I'm as used mm -hmm. to it as I'm ever going to get. Uh, but hyperacusis is um, um, a chronically increased sensitivity to certain frequencies. Um, and for me, that's it could be somebody with um, extra sibilance in their voice. Um, it, it's things like... Um, Oh yeah, and that goes. That's just a pencil on the fruit bowl, yeah. right through me. Wow. Knives on plates, um, dogs barking, kids screaming, air brakes on buses, whistles, anything that's a certain frequency. I actually can physically flinch from. Wow. Quite hard to comprehend, but it does your head in. Yeah. And the, the problem is that I've got hearing aids now. That okay. I wear all the time because I've lost all the top end of my hearing. Yeah. Um, some of that's hereditary, some of it's through loud music, yeah. and some of it is because the tinnitus is so loud that blots out a lot of the sibilant frequencies. Mm. Um, but if I go out to a pub or restaurant, these are out because as soon as I'm in, as soon as I'm in a noise environment, oh, of course, yeah, they just yeah. magnify all the frequencies that drive me bonkers. And that's one of the reasons I live out in the in the sticks here. Because I, I can't tolerate the noise of a city. It, it too loud for me. I just get completely freaked out with it. So, um, how, do, how does it affect you uh, when you're you know, you're playing or recording? Yeah. Um, well, recording, I always uh, monitor as low as I possibly can, um, and I have to keep the headphones down because that's what caused the tinnitus in the first place. Six, mm. seven, eight hours writing songs back in the 80s, 90s on, on the port studio, um, up all night, you know, you get a bit excited, have a few beers, your top end goes, middle middle goes up. Before you know it, the volume's definitely, but you don't realise it to the next day and your ears are ringing a bit and you put your headphones back on, you think, oh, Christ, that's loud. Take it down and it starts coming up again, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's Touring was a real challenge when I ducked out of touring for a good 15 years. And when I rejoined the damn you know, a few years back, um, that was my main worry. But I get around that by having earplugs in most of the time I'm backstage. Um, and we all use in-air monitors. Yeah. Um, and whereas Dave and the drummer and Captain will probably have theirs at number eight. Mine are probably no more than two and a half or three. Yeah. I, I had them very, very low on stage. Mm -hmm. um, but it's most of the noise around it. It's the door slamming, it's people yelling, it's people clapping, you know, crashes of equipment. Um, feedback? Yeah, well, you don't get feedback through IMs, not that I've ever had anyway, so. Right, you know, okay, got, so you're protected you from that. You haven't got your front wedge monitor or side monitor. Yeah, yeah, but you used to have, didn't you? Well, that's what, again, yeah. No, yeah. yeah. So the IMs are, are helpful. Um, I, I get mine made by a company in St. Melons in Cardiff. Oh, yeah. I forget what they're called, but they do a lot of stuff for Formula One and I think the Welsh National Opera. And, that. and that they've tweaked mine as much as they possibly can um, to lessen the... The, top. It, the the difficulty is I've lost all the top-end hearing. I've got nothing above 10K. Um, so, but because I can't hear that, I miss out on a lot of information. Um, sound information. So when I've got listened to television, I've often got the subtitles on as well as the hearing aids. Um, but when I'm in an noise environment, I've got to tone all that down because it, it's too loud and it just yeah. scratches my brain. Mm. So I'm constantly juggling in ear monitors, earplugs, and hearing aids. It, it's a yeah, it's a balancing act. But you know, the alternative is is when I first went to see an audiologist at the at the Heath, um, and he, he he said to me, 
after he looked at all the audio going on his neck, he said, if you don't change your career, one day you're going to walk into sea and not walk out again, which was a, a pretty heavy thing for an audiologist, you know, a, a top consultant to say. And I actually did a, I was a case study for him that, that he used all around the world. It, when he measured my tinnitus levels, they were the loudest that anybody would ever come across. And this is these poor guys that worked down in mines or steel mills and stuff. Um, so, I mean, I'm talking about it now and I'm suddenly noticed the tinnitus yeah. than I normally do because I've learned to yeah. try to suppress it. But it makes concentration really hard. The hyperacusis makes concentration hard. Mm. Um, I just, you know, I'm a pretty solitary person. I, I keep very quiet when I'm not in in the the the, the rock and roll environment. You know, you know how much of how much of that is down? Do you think to you know uh, all those years of kind of gigging and you know monitors and stuff? Is it predominantly that? Do you think or, or not? No, um, because nobody I know has got tinnitus anything like me. Okay. Know? Nona Dam's got it, Nona Hopper's got it, Nona and UFO had it. Um, I'm 90% sure exactly how Pete Townsend got it. Um, I, I've, you know, read a lot of stuff and I had the same audiologist in London as him for a while. Hmm. It's for using headphones. Oh, yeah. Um, and as I said, you record at home on your studio, your little mini or whatever you've got. Hmm. And after a few, I mean, you'll be the same. You know, after an hour or two, your ears get yeah. tired. Um, hearing starts sounding dull, so you, you nudge the volume up. Some of you wearing earbuds or whatever, you know. You put a bit more top end on because your ears are tired and it gets dull. Get an exciting idea you've written. God, that sounds good. <coughs> Turn it up a bit. <coughs> yeah. Do that all night for months on end. Yeah. With a few cans of beer that... Alcohol deadens the top end. I never knew that until. No, I didn't know that. Yeah, two or more cans of, of beer or glass of wine, your your um, top end hearing will start to go. Hmm. And I had considerably more than two two cans of beer or glass of wine <laughs> yes. of a night back then. Um, yeah. So all these things you don't know about, and so hmm. the combination of that and sustained wearing headphones, whether yeah. it's you're touring in a tour bus or a plane or at home recording. Um, gr gradually, you know, I'd wake up the next day and realise my ears were, were, were still ringing far more than the on-stage volume. But as I was doing both at the same time, it actually came on really, 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 really quickly. 